Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sunil Rajguru, editor of DataQuest and your host for today's live workshop. A warm welcome to you all and thank you for joining us for the Microsoft workshop around making hybrid blended learning a reality. Now, before we go on to the workshop, you know, technology is playing a vital role in transforming higher education, especially in the remote and hybrid learning scenario, which is here to stay. With sophisticated technology, students could better engage and collaborate better with the faculty, access learning content and work on projects from anywhere. In addition, it could help keep confidential information of students, staff and university secure while the content and tools are being operated remotely. Hybrid and blended learning could be looked at as an opportunity for great efficiency and collaboration widening the horizons for students with right technology and processes being in place as enablers. So I think uh, this is the background uh, of the you know, uh, workshop we're going to have today. And I think all of us, like we have already got adjusted to the new world. We have got, there's no such thing as the new normal. This is the normal. Everything is work from home, work from anywhere. And uh, we are already in a world of hybrid blended education. I mean, it's already here. We just have to move forward. So on that note, uh, first I would like to invite Amit Pawar, Director Education Microsoft Asia to speak on hybrid learning challenges and opportunities. Over to you, Amit. Thank you, Sunil, and thanks for the opportunity here from our NDF to have uh, me and Niraf. So he hello, Niraf. Say hello to everybody. Hey. Niraf and I are going to be your uh, hosts for this afternoon. So really appreciate everyone joining us. So my name is Amit. I'm a director for Modern Workplace for Microsoft Education based out of Singapore. I've been at Microsoft now 21 years in education for the last eight years. And the last two years have been an amazing ride. So uh, thanks to folks like Nira who have been uh, working in the background to make sure that our products are developing as fast as possible to keep pace with uh, the dem increasing demands of our our education customers across uh, not just Asia, but across the world. So it's a it's a privilege and an honor for me to be here to kind of talk to you about how we are approaching this new hybrid blended classroom um, and, and bringing it to life and what, what we are seeing as trends across uh, Asia. And, and I'll share some ideas and, and things that we are learning from other countries. So I cover countries between New Zealand and India. So I'm hoping that I'll be on a plane soon and not just a virtual background that makes me look like I'm somewhere, but I'm not. So Nira, you want to say hello and introduce yourself, and then uh, we'll kind of go back and forth between Nira and I. And uh, we want to, because this is a live meeting, it's not a live event. You have full freedom to also ask us questions. So this is not like those typical meetings where, or webinars where you go in and it's a one-way dialogue. Uh, and this is not pre-recorded. There's nothing, not, everything is happening in real time. Um, so if, if something breaks and, and um, you know, our demo doesn't work, it will be because this is happening in real. Uh, <laughs> so Nira, over to you. Uh, thanks, thanks, Amit. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, again, really excited to be here. Uh, uh, as Amit said, I'm a part of the Microsoft engineering team, uh, specifically uh, a part of the higher education experiences team. And what we do is uh, create a bunch of solutions and experiences uh, catering to the higher education customers, right? So that's a lot of you. Uh, and we also do uh, work with few strategic customers across the globe. Uh, and I, I do work with customers across India, Middle East, Africa. Uh, so we, I, I can bring in that perspective as well. So I think between Amit and me, we kind of cover the entire Eastern Hemisphere as well. So we have a lot of insights uh, from the work that we've done over the last few years. Um, and happy to share uh, that with the team over here during the call. Uh, I do see, Amit, that I think most of the folks uh, are uh, audio and video disabled. I think that's by design. So I think we'll have a Q&A towards the end. Uh, Sunil, is that correct? Yeah, and if you have any questions in the chat while we are you know, yeah. in the process, they can chat with us anyway. 
Yeah, so the, yeah. I'll just repeat once again. I mean, Amit and Nira will keep giving their gyan. Please listen. And the moment you have doubts, <laughs> please ask the questions. So yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping this doesn't come across as gyan and more a uh, little bit of my experiential. Yeah, uh, sure. Something uh, sharing, uh, as well. Right. <laughs> <like, right. laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, and and as you can see, we are we are a fun, approachable bunch here. So I think you know an interactive conversation will be will be really appreciated. So hey, look, you know, I think you know, I think you, we've all heard enough about that. This is the new normal, and all of that is great. So a lot of the times, you know, I get asked, hey, what's the approach? What's what's making it real? Because I mean, I'll be I'll be completely transparent with everybody. I mean, I went and talked to customers who are doing things on the fly. Uh, very few customers actually had a digital transformation plan to accommodate the emergency requirements of the COVID situation. Uh, and, and uh, you know, something that I want to talk a little bit about in the beginning of this whole conversation is how do we look at the holistic transformation? Because two years we've now been in, in, um, inculcated with this whole idea of online works. Yes, we can do broadcasts. Yes, we can do interactive classrooms. Yes, we can bring in different tools. Um, you know, it's been as rudimentary as going and using text or a text-based messaging service like WhatsApp or Signal or whatever else that is available or Telegram. To you know, a more holistic platform. You know, you may be choosing you know different tools from different vendors that that have, uh, due to familiarity and other reasons, you've actually gone and gravitated towards those tools. And that was the right decision to make at that time because it was truly an emergency. And honestly, I don't think you know we. The only thing that I keep telling everyone was the one thing that saved the planet. That one thing that saved every industry was the fact that we had 10 times the internet capacity than what we needed. And this is not just in education, but across the planet. Somehow, by the miracle of planning, there was so much bandwidth available that we could accommodate everyone going online. Imagine if we didn't have enough bandwidth to accommodate all of this. So that's a boon that happened. Of course, we had to ramp up our server capacity, our data center capacities, network capacities as things were moving. Uh, on, a, on a weekly, daily basis kind of thing. So that's that's something that I really want to kind of emphasize is that's what's driven a lot of what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive in a little bit uh, into what, what that looks like. Now, when it comes to this hybrid learning kind of concept, I want to ground ourselves on a little bit of a reality in this particular slide. We want to concentrate on the three steps or the three components or three pillars, whatever you want to call it, of how we feel hybrid learning can be approached. Number one is this concept of having a transformation framework. Now you may already have that in some form or the other, which could look like a policy. It could look like leadership training. It could be uh, teacher uh, professional development. It could look like many things. What we are suggesting is that we have put together our learnings from where Microsoft's been involved in education for the last 40 plus years, and our learnings from the successes and the failures of helping customers transform using technology for delivering a teaching and learning experience which was enabled by digital technology. Now, it, thought it, it happens to be that this was done prior to the uh, pandemic, but it is even more important today than ever for all of you to consider some kind of a framework. And if you wish to use ours, it's completely free. It's available for you. The guidance does not say, "Thy shall buy a Microsoft tool to enable this. It basically is a guidance on how do you transform education. And okay, at the end of it, if you happen to choose a Microsoft tool to make it happen, we would be more than happy to do that, help you achieve that with our tool set, which is what you see in the middle pil pillar in this slide, which is where we want to enable this hybrid teaching and learning built on the foundation of trust and security. So identity, security, management, and compliance is absolutely the, you know, the founding bedstone of this whole conversation. And then we want to provide a future-proof IT, which is inclusive by design, fosters well-being, accelerates learning, and also is something that is easy for you to deploy and manage, and, and, and really is you know helping our students from a career readiness perspective. And you'll see all the different uh, logos from Microsoft on that, on top of that, basically talking to the fact that, hey, you know, we have 
you know, Azure, that's a cloud that, you know, let, let, lets you innovate anywhere, create anything on top of it. We've got GitHub repositories for you to develop from, Power Platform for you to develop low-code, no-code apps, LinkedIn to manage your professional identity, M365 that you know enge enables engagement and collaboration, and Dynamics that enables orchestration and integration. And if you look at it all, when it all comes together, that's actually all the ingredients and the components that go towards creating a cloud that supports higher education transformation. All right, so that's the kind of context that we link all of these technologies back to our ETM, which is the education transformation framework. I hope this is kind of making a, a little bit of a sense from a linkage perspective. And if there are any questions and you want me to pause, please uh, chat with us, let us know. The last part of this and the third pillar here is going to be the educator center, which is now going to be part of the Microsoft Learn platform that helps us with student outcomes with relevant training that inspire classroom activities and help your educators be confident in using technology in the context of hybrid teaching and learning. And we've been very deliberate here about not being about the, the product, but more about using the product in the context of teaching and learning. So here you won't find the details of how to use PowerPoint, but how do you use, how do you create lesson plans that are more engaging using PowerPoint or using Teams or using OneNote, or it could be bringing in third-party applications and integrating them into Teams and so on and so forth. So it's more about that rather than about, you know, the product uh, technical knowledge about the product itself. So that's, that's kind of the approach we are taking here. I hope this kind of brings you, to give you in one slide an appreciation for the plethora of offerings from, from Microsoft that enables all of this. And to make this happen, to be honest, what, is, what we've noticed is a lot of the conversation focused around this concept of, hey, you know what? Give me a device to interface with all of this. Uh, a lot of times when we talk to customers, they, they are really talking about how do I interface digitally? Do I use a phone? Do I use a tablet? Do I use a, a, a consumption device or do I use a creation device? And, and, and we would like to you know, suggest that with Windows 11 Pro and Windows 11 SE for education, with that is managed by Intune for education, really gives you a foundational portal that enables you to interact with this whole you know, world that we talked about earlier in the previous slide, which basically means that we want to make sure that we leverage existing investments that a lot of our customers have. We know you've gone and you know, uh, invested in LMSs, you've invested in student management system, we want to leverage that to create authoritative database that we can then create a digital identity for you in Azure AD that then lets you take advantage of all of our services. So we then provide you the foundational services that enable all of these experiences that you want. So we will create your digital identity. We give you the online email, the online storage, the online collaboration platform, the device management capabilities and the security to make sure that you have a secure experience while you're doing this over the internet. Uh, then on top of that, we build different experiences. And these experiences, says some of them are familiar to you, like, like Office 365 applications, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and others. Some may be new to you, like Teams for Education that have been designed specifically for education. So, And this goes beyond the concept of ho hosting live events or live meetings like the one we are doing right now. It also gets to the point of online, offline, synchronous, asynchronous collaboration, because it does build on the foundation of Exchange and SharePoint and OneDrive and other things, and brings them all together into the Teams platform. And Nirav is going to be talking to us a little bit more about that in detail, about how Teams as a platform really comes together to enable that. But beyond Teams, there's the browser that is designed specifically for internet. Uh, for, for education capabilities, right? So we have education specific capabilities that accommodate for different accessibility requirements. Because all of these products that we have on, in, in, on display here have accessibility and inclusion by default. It's by design, not as a bolt on. And we are very proud to say that compared to our peers in the, in the industry, we have five X more accessibility and inclusion capabilities in our products because that is something that has been in our design philosophy for the last five years plus. 
and and really is 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 creating a new uh, capability and empowering our students to create uh, inclusion for different uh, students with different learning abilities and also for educators that have different uh, requirements from a teaching uh, capability as well so that's that's one more thing that we want to empower you with lastly we are also talking about being online offline because in in, in developing countries you know, as much as we would like to think that we have internet coverage everywhere, we don't. So we want to make sure that we also enable st our students to have an online offline experience. So your data and your content can be cached on your on your on your device so that it can be used later on uh, as and when internet is available and synchronized back to the cloud. Uh, other experiences which don't always uh, translate to higher education, but you will be surprised. A lot of our higher education and, uh, customers are now leveraging Minecraft to even gamify learning in higher education because it has become a platform that it's surprising that even children and adults find it quite an engaging platform. So I would love to, um, you know, I'd love to get your thoughts and, and feedback on how we could potentially see the use of Minecraft in higher education as well. And in higher education, we see a lot of usage of our development platform. So the Visual Studio Code, which is a free um, IDE, becomes one of the enablers for us to also talk about to our customers. So that's a little bit of a whirlwind on the on the product set. I, like I said earlier, we do have the professional development that that is available along with certification that goes with it. So if if a institution really wants to go through with the full, um, you know. Uh, offering of, 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 of uh, certification for their students and their teachers, we do offer that. And lastly, we do offer a analytics and insights into how this uh, platform is being used to benefit the end user. The way I look at it is like having insights is, is really, really important because we are investing a lot of money in devices. We are investing a lot of money in these services and these experiences. But when we are doing that, how do we know that the impact of these technologies and these experiences is positive towards the learning outcome. And that is one of the key capabilities, and we'll show you this later on, is the Insights app uh, that, that enables all of this. So with that, Nirav, get ready. We're going to get, jump into a little bit of a, co a conversation around what um, Teams does for us. So we'll move from the high-level conversation about how we approach hybrid learning to now getting into the little bit of detail about how our platform is really enabling this personalized, inclusive, engaging, and flexible uh, kind of experience for our end users, right? So it, it needs to accommodate the students in the way that they want to learn in, in a virtual class, um, be it things like, um, I don't know if you want to demonstrate this right now, we can do things like captioning. So we can turn on live captions. So as I'm speaking, you can actually see what's going on and, uh, and what I speak turns up uh, as, as one of the uh, things that, that the AI does for me uh, uh, while I'm presenting. I don't know if you can see that, but if you if you click on that dot, dot, dot uh, on top, you can actually click on live captioning. It will show what I'm showing, uh, what I'm saying, and it will actually transcribe it for you. So we are using artificial intelligence to also enhance this online learning experience for our end users. I think there's a question there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somebody has their hand up. Yeah, uh, there's a question uh, uh, from uh, Professor Bhattacharya. Yes. So, uh, Professor Bhattacharya says, could you please elaborate on your online offline concept? Great. Yes, I thought that would get people's attention <laughs> because <laughs> um, that is something that is, I mean, if you look at it, we are cloud ready and not cloud dependent is, is the way I look at it. Because if you look at, I mean, historically, Microsoft's been, you know, prior to the cloud being uh, or the internet being a thing, of course, we were already there, right? Back in the, uh, you know, um, you know, Microsoft's been there for now multiple years. I, I, I was only two when I joined Microsoft, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but it's been it's been 21 years for me at Microsoft, and it's been there longer than that. But um, uh, the 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 pedigree here tells us that we need to cater for uh, this online offline experience. So for example, we've got a lot of our customers using OneNote. So you see this particular icon here, and I don't know how many of you have actually used OneNote, but OneNote is now a integral part of the team's experience. 
for education. What that allows you to do is literally use notebooks, digital notebooks that are very analogous to how we are used to using books, as in notebooks where we used to take notes. Now, these are digital versions of notebooks that can do few things differently to what notebooks can do. One, they can synchronize and enable collaboration. Second, you can, because of the ability to secure content, teachers can create content libraries where they can actually host content that is read only for the students. Lastly, we can enable student notebooks that are part of this class notebook. So imagine the teacher can see everybody's notebook. I'm sure if you remember, and I'm sure you, you've experienced this many times, where an assignment is given, the assignment either photocopied and put out to students, the student then fills out the assignments and then they return the book back or the worksheets back. We no longer have to do that because OneNote enables that distribution collection of everything. And by the way, OneNote also enables you to do online, offline grading of that content. So when you do grading, and I know examples of uh, you know universities in Malaysia where the professors are grading on a commute because the commute is one or two hours, so they're commuting on uh, commuting on the bus with their tablet or whatever, and they're grading their uh, one note. And when they go back uh, and connect to the internet, the grading is synchronized back to the great great um, uh, grading system in the back end. So those are examples of how we enable an online offline experience that is realistic and and just as a, that, that example of grading that is saving professors and, and teachers hours every week because a lot of the time is in the operational logistics of distributing content collecting content making sure it is appropriately graded and then uploading that grading into the grading system now if we can bring that all into one workflow it creates a lot of scalability it creates a lot of opportunity for us to be creative in the way we distribute content, which can be text, uh, obviously uh, pictures, video, and links to other external resources that need the students to use during their you know, teaching and learning outcomes that they're trying to achieve. So it really changes the mindset when we do have those capabilities. And I would love to kind of do a deep dive into OneNote. It's probably a one hour session by itself to explain to you the various ways we can start using uh, OneNote. But the co concept here is that every classroom we create in Teams comes with a class notebook. So it is, it is quite a game changer when we start thinking about this as a holistic uh, things. Uh, yes, so good question. LMSs also do that, but this is, an, this is an integration with the LMS as well. So if you do have an LMS, OneNote will integrate with your LMS. It is not, again, we are at no stage is any of this component, and that's why I've been very clear to say in point number two, that we are leveraging and working with your current student management system as an LMSs, uh, and, and we bring value to those. And we work with the you know, most popular LMS providers out there, like the Moodles, the Canvases, and others, uh, who are integrating into this platform as well. Um, the other question is, does this platform enable multiple parallel uh, group discussions? And the answer to that is yes, we do. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Later. Excellent. I'm glad we're getting questions. questions. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Nirav. Yeah, uh, I mean, am I audible? Am I audible? Uh, semi audible, whoever that is. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I was just checking if I'm audible on the LMS piece, right? Nira, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's a network issue at my end, but uh, the, the point that I was trying to make on the LMS piece, right? I think uh, the great point uh, that uh, I think some has brought up, uh, our, our approach is to meet the customers where they are. I think if, if you're already using an incumbent LMS, uh, awesome. I think uh, Teams has a, a, a space to integrate and work with the LMS and the feedback that we've received from a lot of our customers, uh, ministries of education that we work with across the globe is LMS is a great uh, tool for creating courses, sharing content and all of that. 
but it doesn't really bring that real time communication and collaboration and engagement that uh, educators are looking for in an online world. Right? So we want to blend that experience. So you see a lot of uh, announcements that you would have seen in the last few months. Uh, uh, where we are working closely with these elements prior to COVID, if I will, and uh, educators started using Teams as a platform primarily for online meetings initially, just to run the classes. But it kind of then build up uh, most of the requirements that uh, they would look for in an LMS. So I think Teams is uh, being leveraged in, in ways that we had not earlier envisioned. And it's it's great feedback from customers that's kind of driving the way we want to uh, you know take uh, our development forward as engineer. Yeah, uh, Amit, uh, Amit, uh, it wasn't very clear. I mean, can you just maybe summarize? I think there's some network issues here, so I got the gist of it. But maybe if you can just summarize what he said. For yeah, those I will summarize talking. very quickly what uh, Nirav was trying to say. I mean, with the fundamental there is that prior to the prior to the um, uh, COVID time there was there was some integration but over time we've actually seen greater integration with various lms providers right so the canvas the blackboards and others are now working with us to make sure that there is a seamless experience between what the content the, the core structure that's happening in lms and that integrates with the real time capabilities of collaboration communication and also the data analytics that we are providing through our platform that really enhances the value of the LMS when it's integrated with M365, specifically with Teams and OneNote. So those are the two areas where we have seen a, a uh, marked change in the approach that a lot of our LMS providers have taken and the way our platform has evolved in the last two years as well. So we've put in a lot of engineering efforts towards that, and I'm sure Nirav has been working with a lot of LMS providers across India as well as across the world to make sure that this integration continues beyond just the initial integration around, you know, being able to set teams meetings from within the LMS, being able to schedule your classrooms from it within the LMS. We are now also providing capabilities like, um, you know, synchronization of your classrooms into LMS, uh, into teams, which will also reflect an outlook, for example. So there are many different uh, areas of um, overlap, but also areas of integration that enhances the real outcome for your end user. And that combined with the online offline experience that I spoke about earlier with OneNote completely changes the game from uh, content distribution, as well as making sure that we have the ability to use this content and collaborate on that content online offline. Nira, I'm sorry, you're back. I, I'm hoping your network connection is improved. Yeah, fingers crossed. Great. I kind of thought that we would spend most of our time on this slide because this slide is probably the one that gives you the holistic picture of all the different components within our solution. Now, each of these solution areas and, and components has its own you know, value prop and, and, and conversation that we would love to have in depth because that, that warrants, uh, I mean, each of these icons probably is a 30, 40 minute conversation in itself at a minimum. But in today's call, we'll probably just focus in on some of the high level capabilities in these four areas on how we are delivering some of these things. And we would love to give you a little bit of a taste for what it looks like. So not only are we giving you a high level PowerPoint, but also getting into a little bit of a product demo of what it enables um, through some of the uh, resources that Nirav has put together in this slide deck as well. So with your permission, and if there are any other questions, we'll continue to address them. But in the meantime, we will move on uh, to, to the next part of this whole conversation. So the idea here is that Teams is, is becoming the hub for a lot of the conversation. Now, even logistically on a day-to-day -day basis, when we are in a classroom, when we're trying to teach and learn, we have the, the logistical requirement to go between applications, go between browsers, and go between different places. What one of the aims is to also simplify that logistics in the classroom. So when we are doing all of this work, Teams really does enable a central location for you to do all of your work. So that workflow conversation of being able to look at your calendar, join a conversation, communicate, 
collaborate, open your files, edit your files within uh, Teams is all possible. So literally, I mean, I've seen uh, educators who have gone through an entire day of teaching and learning experience without leaving the Teams UI because it does allow you to bring in external application. It does allow you to integrate external websites into the same UI. So even from a logistical perspective, it creates a better um, experience for you. So it, it, you know the immersive experience in the classroom on any device is possible. It is available on mobile, web, and of course, we have desktop applications for Windows and Mac uh, that, that really enhances the capabilities as well, right? And, and like, like we said earlier on as well, we want to make sure that it connects into your existing apps and, and systems. This is not about a rip and replace. Um, our approach is not about going in and saying, hey, you know, you've got this investment in the LMS, let's kind of remove that. The approach is very much about embrace and extend and integrate as much as possible. That makes sense for you. Um, and, and, and the other part here is also, we are developing our own experiences within Teams, like reading progress, like the Career Coach app and Viva Insights and Viva Learning that extend the capabilities of this platform to really take it to the next level to create a, uh, a learning teaching environment that is holistic. And you will see developments from this platform in the next few months as, as we move forward as well. But with that in mind, let's kind of move along to see, you know, this then we can deep dive into all of the capabilities and the next few slides you will see details around this from how do we help students become more effective collaborators, enabling real world skills, holistic view of the students well being and academic success. You'll see all of this in the next few slides so I won't uh, go into this in depth right now, but also just to impress upon you all of the capabilities we have now been able to deliver. In the last few months, you can read this slide as it's rolling by like a credits. We are enabling all of these experiences within Teams, right? So the assignment side, distribution and grading of coursework. We talked a little bit about this, connecting to your existing LMSs, improving your emotional vocabulary and understanding of self, so on and so forth, continues to be a big focus for us. So with that, let's kind of dive into the first area. So Nirav, do you want to take this over? Sure, I'm happy to do that. Um, uh, before I kind of get into uh, talking specifically about the personalization piece uh, that we had, uh, just from an engineering perspective, right, uh, uh, specifically about teams, because I think that's, that's been something which has uh, been really widely adopted. I think while uh, while we have our own roadmap of what we think, uh, you know, the solution should do or the platform should do, I think a lot of uh, development is driven from, from customers. I think when the pandemic initially hit, it was all about, hey, let's get classes online. I mean, we need great meeting solutions, which can just kickstart stuff, uh, a click, click, and we are good to go. So I think a lot of our focus that. And as we've seen customers kind of build more comfort with all of that, the focus is, uh, hey, do we have uh, better tools and platforms that we can bring in to uh, make the online interaction more engaging? And therefore, you see Teams has actually become a platform um, where a lot of third party solutions are available, not just from the Microsoft world, but you know, uh, come people like Kahoot and uh, you know, a lot of those other uh, 3P solutions that you can plug, plug them into teams and, and run seamless classes. Uh, from the next that we've seen is a lot of educational leaders, academic leaders like yourselves ask us about, hey, where's, where's the data? You know, we're running all of these classes online. I, I need more insights. Where can I? Uh, you know, get get hold of the data. Do I know whether uh, what's happening is real or no? Are the students actually engaged? So a lot of uh, one of the pillars for us as investment going forward uh, is, is more on insights, and you've seen some of it, uh, you know, come out uh, in the last few months as well, right? And uh, of course, as as we have more and more AI tools at our disposal, I think uh, especially from a higher ed perspective, right? The idea is how can you personalize the learning experience. Uh, with the objective of getting students, uh, you know, ready for a career, if you will, right? I think that's that's the focus. And when we talk about developing this career readiness, uh, it, I mean, there are multiple things, but we'll touch upon some of these things uh, that you see over here. It's primarily, you know, it's not necessarily very complicated, but can we mimic the environment that they are probably going to see in the workplace? 
uh, how can we better get them to experience that beforehand so that uh, you know they have uh, the relevant skills that they need and uh, also around uh, you know how can they go about bridging some of the gaps that they might have uh, so that's what uh, we'll, we'll cover in the next few minutes uh, Amit, uh, do you want to pop next or do you want me to take control and i will move the slides okay awesome thank you either way all right okay let's uh, let me let me ask for control it's a live demonstration <laughs> after all let me oh, you know okay. Yeah, you're in control. Awesome. OK, so the first uh, thing that we see over here is, uh, you know, how do we help students become effective collaborators in communication? I mean, these are universal, uh, you know, elements that every student will ask for. Uh, first and foremost, I think especially in higher ed, uh, the focus is more on uh, getting them uh, to work together as groups. So while point one calls about the whiteboard, uh, which is which is a great tool for not just assignments, but also meetings. I think uh, one of the things that we released recently was the group assignments feature wherein uh, the educator can kind of tag the entire group together and give them a common assignment. Uh, they all work on it together um, using whiteboard for live collaboration if they want to uh, and then submit it and uh, it has a common uh, grading that uh, they all get at the end of it, right? So that was one. Uh, it kind of brings them to collaborate in real time. And this collaboration is not just limited to whiteboard, if you will. Right? I think uh, what we've seen more and more is uh, uh, people working remotely and they work uh, real time. So whether it is a doc or a PowerPoint presentation, we are co-authoring, working on it together. Uh, not only can you open that PowerPoint deck within Teams and work on it together, you can actually have a chat around it as well in real time. So the snippet that you actually see on the screen, you know, shows that the PowerPoint is actually within Teams. You're not leaving Teams. Uh, you are co-authoring, and at the same time, you are chatting as well. So if you have any questions and queries, the students can kind of talk to each other and uh, resolve that while they are working on it. All of this is is, is in real time, right? So that's uh, basic stuff, but I, I think it really helps, uh, you know, bring that. Uh, real-time collaboration into, into the world, right? That's the idea. Uh, the next one, I think this is something that we've uh, worked on recently, basis inputs from you know, customers, um, is uh, having an, a more modern, polished uh, intranet portal, if you will, for lack of any other word, where uh, universities and education uh, institutes can bring everybody together Right, you can communicate with uh, you know your your peers. Uh, you can come together uh, for information in one place. As a university, you want to drive your vision. You want to have your leaders come and uh, address uh, the larger crowd. Um, there's a short video that is available. You want to call out, uh, you know, hey, these are the upcoming things uh, that are happening in our uh, in the university, so on and so forth. So, Eva Connection is really nice. Uh, uh, tool that kind of helps you create this polished modern intranet portal, which will help you, you know, communicate to students and educators at scale as academic leaders. That is what you want. So, you know, uh, helps helps with that. Uh, planner, of course, from the students' perspective, I, I think as they move into the workplace, uh, they they will be forced to manage their productivity, be more, uh, you know, cognizant of how and where they spend their time. And this tools like these, which are available in Team Today, Teams Today, uh, kind of help them plan their day better, right? So uh, small things, but I think they really kind of uh, stitch the entire story of uh, giving students that ability to kind of customize uh, their uh, uh, productivity or customize the way they want to spend their day, basically. Uh, the next one, right? And I think this is this is really an interesting one. A lot of uh, feedback from customers. Uh, there's a big gap. There's there isn't really any strong um, you know, solution that's currently available in the market. So this is this has been in the making for two years. Uh, so Career Coach is an app which is Achha, available. Nirav, Nirav, just just one minute. Amit, can you go on mute? I think the collaboration experience is so good. We can hear you typing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ajay. Sorry, yes, my mic is really close to my keyboard. Yeah. Thanks, sorry. Sure, sure, sure. No worries. So. Uh, all right, so let me let me hop on to that train of thought that I was on. Uh, yeah, so a career coach is actually a 
an app in Teams which is powered by LinkedIn, right? So we know that LinkedIn is the professional identity, if you will, for every uh, you know person working in the industry or otherwise. And uh, students who are in college kind of really aspire to build that identity, uh, you know, so that they make a better impression uh, when they reach out to potential recruiters and so on and so forth. So what what does career coach do? Right, it it allows students to create a profile for themselves. So let's say I am a year one student, you know, learning computer science or learning history for that matter. Uh, so that kind of this is what I am today. Uh, these are the skills that I currently possess, right? This is what I bring to the table as of today. So that's what the student is or are today. And then it also gives them an opportunity to identify what are their areas of interest, what are the skills that they would like to acquire, or uh, maybe what are the roles that they want to get into. Uh, so it kind of gives them an option to kind of tick, tick, tick and select all of those uh, things. So it's uh, where I am today, where I wish to be, and then how will I bridge this gap, right? So that's the story that every student uh, uh, asks for, and that's what career coach kind of brings to the table. So once they've done all of this, what career coach does is it gives them an opportunity uh, to learn, which means bridge the gap uh, using uh, courses that are available. You know, you can have an MS Learn integration, you can have the entire LinkedIn courses, LinkedIn learning courses portfolio. And as a university, if you have your own cost, custom content that is already available and you want to bring that into a uh, career coach, you can do that as well, right? So it uh, gives them specific recommendations based on their interest, based on what jobs they're looking for. Uh, and, uh, you know, they can then go ahead and learn at their own pace to kind of bridge that gap. The other great thing that it does, and because it's kind of powered by LinkedIn, it also gives them visibility to alums from their own university or college who went through the same or similar journey and where they are today. Like this is a really powerful tool, right? For uh, any student to see, you know, the, an alum who was maybe five years, 10 years uh, before him, gone through the same path, is aware of like, hey, you know, XYZ uh, college, this is the role, this is the company, right? Uh, it, it's really powerful and it motivates students to uh, kind of pursue that path, right? It's it's not a pipe dream, it's realistic. You have the data right in front of you. And students can potentially reach out to these uh, uh, alums to kind of make that connect as well, right? So that's what Career Coach uh, brings uh, to the table. It's, it's a value added offering um, that is available uh, uh, from, from Teams, right? That's that's the value add that it, uh, it has. So a great, great tool, and uh, you know, given the initial reception that we've seen, uh, really excited uh, to you know bring further enhancements uh, to this as well. Nirav, um, I've given a link to that um, in in the in the chat for folks who are interested in this. Awesome, thank you, thanks, uh, Amit. Uh, moving forward uh, quickly, I, I think we are like really behind time. I didn't know we are already forty five minutes <laughs> into the call. Uh, we have topics. I think it's, it's similar. It's kind of an internal repository of uh, you know topics and discussions uh, that are happening, and uh, both students and educators can leverage that. Um, the one that I did want to talk about, since we're talking about personalization of the learning experience and also preparing students for the workplace is the presenter coach that is available today, right? It's there in PowerPoint. And in fact, uh, if uh, you have, uh, maybe if you're an external user, you can't see that, but we have a speaker coach right in this meeting as well, right? Because if I'm a speaker, I can enable that. Uh, what presenter coach does is it gives the students an opportunity to practice one-on-one uh, -on -one and uh, give specific feedback on how they are presenting. Right. So things like, uh, you know, is your pace too fast or too slow? Or are you just, you know, at the right pace? Uh, if you're not really confident, students tend to end up using a lot of filler words. So it kind of points them, you know, hey, you're using, you know, these, these uh, fillers in specific places. So if they are aware of it, then they can probably take corrective actions, right? A lot of them that happens subconsciously. And also, you know, as a part of our design philosophy, Amit mentioned earlier, I think we want to be inclusive for everyone. So are they using the right phrases? Uh, you know, are they culturally sensitive in some of the terms and uh, you know, conversation that we are having? So this is something that every student can leverage, uh, you know, one on one and, uh, you know, prepare better for uh, presentations that they inevitably end up making uh, to larger platforms, right? 
So that's that's what we're doing uh, from a career readiness perspective. Uh, while we do all of this, right? I, I think it's about hey, co communicate, uh, collaborate, and communicate, build these relevant skills. Uh, it's also important at the same time for educators uh, and academic leaders to have the right data and the insights about how the students are working and uh, how are they uh, progressing in that journey. So you have uh, insights that is available today um, that the basic version of insights is, is actually free. It's there in teams for every class. Every educator can you know click on access it. It talks about the digital activity of the students. Basically, you know, are, are the students missing classes or are they regular to their classes? Are they submitting assignments on time? Which student is missing uh, assignment submissions or which student is submitting late? Uh, is there any student who's really inactive and not participating? We don't see any chats or conversations from that particular student. This is like live, very real time data that educators can act upon, right? In a one to end scenario, unless you have these ditches, educators cannot take informed decisions. And this really helps educators kind of uh, drive the student engagement uh, you know, much better. And uh, for academic leaders, we, we do have an enhanced version of this called the Insights Premium. Again, I think it's a value add that is available, which kind of aggregates a lot of this data at uh, the leadership level, right? So if I am a vice chancellor or a dean of a university and we have 10 to 15 colleges, I would like to see, you know, a Uber level view of, you know, Hey, you know, Department of Social Sciences, I think X meetings are happening, students are active, assignment submission is pretty good. But in one of the other departments, we see that, uh, you know, the assignment submission is poor, meetings are less, students are dropping out. So it kind of helps you get the top level view as leaders of, uh, you know, what is happening in each department. And if that's an intervention that needs to happen, uh, you can take that uh, decision, right? Uh, that's, that's again tying into that initial point that you brought about of being data. Uh, data driven in our decision making process right so that's uh that's about uh, uh you know bringing in the right insights of course insights are not just for uh, you know what is happening in the class i think given the pandemic and the stresses a social and emotional well-being for the student is, is also really important so we have this app called reflect which is available like it asks a very simple question to the students every single day or you can design the frequency and all of that it's like, how are you feeling today? And students genuinely answer that question, right? We would suspect that they might want to game it, but data suggests that there's a lot of uh, students who genuinely answer that uh, correctly. And uh, it kind of gives the educator a sense of, uh, you know, the mood of a class uh, on any particular day. And they might then, you know, take time out to intervene as and when uh, required, right? So these are some of the important ones. I'll not uh, cover each and everything. Uh, I'll quickly move through some of these. Uh, one one part that you would want to talk about, not specifically about this app, which is saying, hey, you know, reopen responsibility, responsibly and all of that. Um, Teams, as I said, is a platform, right? And so what we are seeing is a lot of educational institutions are bringing their own solutions or their own apps or custom creating apps uh, into Teams. So this is an example of one such app, to be honest, right? So if you are, uh, you know, opening uh, to in person or if you've already opened and you want to have a bunch of checklists in place you know you want students to say yes i i have no fever for last 72 hours i didn't show any of the symptoms uh, only then that particular student is allowed to attend or you know there's only 30 students can uh, come to a class every day the rest of them have to join remotely those kind of things so there are these lot of low code no code solutions which customers can create for themselves and uh, you know it will show up in teams so teams kind of remains that single front end but uh, you you can bring whatever you want uh, onto teams as a platform right so that's the whole idea of uh, how how educators and academic leaders can you kind know, of help or monitor uh, students in this uh, journey of theirs right so uh, that's that's about personalizing uh, the learning experience and you know getting students ready uh, I think the next piece is about uh, accessibility and inclusion. And uh, let me punt the ball back to Amit. I think he's, he's done some great work with uh, some of his customers. Uh, uh, Amit, do you want to take over? Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So one of the things that, you know, I talked a little bit about this a little bit earlier is this whole thing around making things accessible, live captions. And I, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you know, we've now enabled the cart 
translation as well and transcription. Just, that is just last week. Just last I week know. we shipped it. So <laughs> actually, probably my first uh, customer event where we are actually talking about the card enabled, uh, you know, communication access real time translation. Right. Uh, we also now have in you know speaker attribution, so we'll know exactly who said what during the meeting, which helps us also from a uh, actions or we want to be able to transcribe live audio into text and display uh, and use it for folks who are hard of hearing, deaf or non-native speaking audiences can follow along in the meetings. So it creates a lot of inclusion op opportunities for us. So and also enhances the experience for those who may you know need to go back, refer to the video recording and also follow along the transcription with it. Because all of our recordings that we do in Teams can be then put into Microsoft Stream, which is an internal uh, video uh, repository as well as a capability that enables you to do private streaming channels of your content as well. So there is enhanced capability beyond what normally customers have been used to public video sharing applications that, that you know, create IP sharing uh, issues as well. Uh, so yeah, like I said, meeting transcripts with speaker attribution is one of those things. So you will see the recordings go in and beyond the recording, you'll also see the actual user attribution to it. So it creates a nice experience. The other thing is we are creating new novel way of engagement as well. So you can actually have presenter modes to create more visual cues and reduce information overload by overlaying yourself in different modes. And one of them is this uh, kind of a news presenter mode where you're able to present yourself. Uh, we are also making sure that, you know, you have the ability to then bring in a transcription of all of the messages in Teams, on, even on the mobile app. So that, that really changes the game. And lastly, it, there is a capability, which I think is probably one of the biggest value differentiator for Microsoft, is this ability for us to also do translation of all the, um, uh, of the actual communications that we have. But beyond that, we also have this ability to do what is called immersive reader. Immersive Reader lets you actually use and, and, and collaborate using a view of the, of the data in such a way that, that it accommodates for different visual learning styles. People who have visual disabilities and need additional help like color blindness or need additional help with reading the content, we have this uh, capability called Immersive Reader, which is now available across all of our applications. So this is not just about uh, you know, we boost the size of the text. We can create space between words and, and the actual alphabets, uh, between the letters. We can highlight words. We can even have uh, a picture dictionary that allows you to uh, see the meaning of the word. We can work out things like grammar, whether this is a noun, verb, pronoun. So it also helps you from understanding the language. And of course, we can also translate this into a different language as well. This is something that really has changed the game and a lot of customers who in the past have not been able to include the, you know, people of different learning abilities into the one class are now suddenly creating more diverse uh, classroom with people with different uh, backgrounds and learning uh, abilities. Uh, the other one that, that really gets a lot of uh, kudos from, uh, from many universities across the world is this ability to do accessibility checker. So the content that you're creating would also be checked for its ability to be used by people with different learning needs. So it uses artificial intelligence to work out things like missing alternative text, or you know, if you've highlighted it correctly, if you've tagged the picture correctly, if you've named a, a, you know, a figure correctly or not. And, and if you had a AI reader, which is immersive reader, read your content, how would it actually flow? So it looks for all of those things. And of course, anything that we do with accessibility will also then translate into multiple languages. And we keep on adding more and more languages. I think we're now covering 12 local languages in India, plus obviously multiple international languages outside of India as well. The other thing, this whole conversation around immersive classrooms and how we enable that, uh, you know, a couple of things to kind of uh, understand there is this ability to also hold blended classes. Uh, and, and different learning environments that we want to accommodate and assignment and grade work within, within teams and uh, a central place for all of the work. So one of those areas is this what we are doing today. You're actually seeing that experience today. I'm actually using 
the present content to Teams right from PowerPoint. So there is integration between PowerPoint and, and Teams that enables that experience. So we can move back and forth between the slides quite easily and use you know, various tools like the pen or, or, or a highlighter that, that I can use to kind of you know, really engage, uh, engage you in a, in, a, in a more immersive way. Um, and of course, we can use the cursor and, and, and laser pointers and things. The other thing, there was a call out earlier about breakout rooms. Absolutely, we support that, whether you want to do random breakouts or you want to have pre-populated breakouts or you want to manually assign breakouts, that can be done and you can bring them back. And all of the work that has been done there can be recorded and brought back in and, and everything's kind of kept. Persistent chat, persistent uh, audio video recordings can be also done there. So I think that is also one of those things that has been really called out by a lot of our educators as, as a capability that they're looking for in a, in, in a platform. Um, the last thing we already talked a little bit about the recording uh, of the class session with transcription, which is quite important. Uh, and, and creating more engagement through various views. So we introduced this concept called together mode earlier on, which allows you to immerse yourself like you're in a classroom. The reason behind doing this, because this actually, this view makes it look a lot more natural compared to multiple squares that we are we have been used to with multiple people on a grid in, in a video video grid on, on your computer screen. This has shown to be uh, shown to reduce cognitive load on the user. So it can it, it, it actually. Uh, yeah, so Sonali, the question around can we record uh, breakout rooms? Yes, we can. The other thing is, yeah, we totally understand that, you know, we are now using our remote learning experiences in different environments. So it could be a typical environment like what I'm doing right now from home where I'm in front of my laptop uh, or, or Nero's in his office in front of his laptop. But of course, there are environments where we need to accommodate where the educator, the presenter is in a, in a large um, auditorium environment. So we are working with our ecosystem of AV providers and, and uh, device providers to make sure that we give you that experience, regardless of how you've set your uh, place up. Whether it's using you know large scale cameras, whether we're using uh, interactive boards, whether we're using existing whiteboards that use cameras to then uh, you know create a view where you can uh, have the content being the center of the conversation and and creating new experiences. So obviously. We are enabling things through our own first party devices like the Surface Hub as a interactive digital collaboration platform. We're obviously also working with various OEMs uh, and, and device form factors from desktops to laptops to um, mobile devices as well. And over time, the consistency of the experience is going to be better. Obviously, some form factors are, are better designed for particular work, work, uh, workload, workload scenarios. So it does create a opportunity for us to think about the right device for the right experience that we want to provide to the end user. And just to add to that, uh, I mean, from the, the rooms, right, for the blended learning, because we see a lot of customers bring elements of this up. Uh, while agreed, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a Microsoft, uh, you know, alone solutions, a lot of devices, hardware from, uh, you know, a lot of our partners. Uh, I think there are different ways uh, depending on the level of uh, uh, complexity as well as the investment that is required. And we've, we've seen um, higher education institutes try out different flavors of it. Uh, at, a, at a very base level, it could just be having one meetings, uh, Teams meeting room device, uh, the small device that you can see on the table in that room. And just a couple of, yeah, that's the one, thanks. Uh, and uh, you know, just a couple of cameras, one to capture the, uh, uh, the educator and one to capture the content uh, on the whiteboard, right? So just two cameras and one Teams room device kind of uh, does that. Uh, the more uh, you know, enhanced versions of these include uh, you know stuff like having speakers in the uh, in the ceiling so that if the people who are present in the class are talking. Uh, the folks who are joining online should not miss out on stuff like that. So multiple cameras cap capturing the rest of the you know class as well. So anybody who is present online should have a near real time or near in person experience, right? So there's a lot of interesting uh, experiments. Uh, multiple MOEs and the universities are trying out currently. Uh, so I think this is an exciting space, uh, you know, uh, for sure. 
Yeah, and I've, I've put a link to one of these um, you know, places where you can actually learn a little bit more about the various scenarios. Uh, on that page, we have a little bit more detail into exactly what Nero and I've been just talking about from this team's rooms experience. Because in the past, we've seen customers having to invest in specific you know, uh, third-party uh, solutions to enable lecture capture. Now that is entirely possible for you to integrate um, that using Teams. And, and, I, and it has it has obviously uh, cost implications and integration implications and usage implications and others as well. So it is quite nice um, for you to be able to reduce your complexity of deployment of these environments as well. I don't know if somebody's actually okay. The last one was from a policy perspective, and I think there were some questions around how do we create these policies to control what happens, how the meeting experiences, and others. We've now actually created a, a setup experience for IT pros who are managing your IT admins who are managing your environment to make it a lot more easier for them to create policy packages based on a on a step-by-step uh, -step guide. So essentially, this this goes and 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 creates a safe learning environment that meets your policy requirements for the way teams will behave in your environment. Niram, I don't know if you have any comments on that. You're on mute. Sorry. I think that's one of the policies. There's one day where you are on mute and you're talking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think this was born from feedback again from customers where uh, while Teams gives you all the bells and whistles to tweak depending on your convenience, uh, it makes it difficult for uh, IT folks uh, who are not all that savvy or comfortable with Teams. So they, uh, the ask was, can we have a you know, default option for higher education and K-12? And we just start with that. And if we want to change things around, we can then you know tweak it. So that is what this op option offers. So when you select higher education, for example, all your chat uh, options, all your meeting options, uh, right, your group collaboration options, they all reflect what a higher education institution would want, right, based on major feedback. Uh, of course, you do have the flexibility to go and change it whenever you want, but you don't really need to invest time and energy in setting up. So the IT team's job becomes really easy. They just select that button and then they are done, right? That's the yeah. idea. Cool. The other thing is this whole concept around grading and integration with grading uh, and, and also using LTI capable uh, grading integration back into your LMS systems as well or your grading uh, systems. Uh, if you have an LTI based application in the back end, we are more than happy to, you know, uh, to integrate with you as well. Um, so the idea behind this was to initially create a very basic uh, workflow for assignments, but that has grown over time to also include group assignments. As, as we saw, uh, I think Nero uh, talked about this earlier, but it, before that we used to only be able to do create assignments for individuals. So you could under, create individual or group assignments and attach the relevant materials. And now we are also enabling the ability for you to attach applications to the assignments. So if you need somebody to do an action within an application, you can do that, whether they need to consume content from an application or whether they need to take an action within an application, that can be part of the assignment that work that you are assigning to the end user. All right, so we can, so you know. To that, I mean, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Add that, I think one more context, right? Uh, so I, I think it's fairly well documented in theory, more in the K-12 space, but I think it's equally applicable in higher ed that, there are learners of different types, right? You have visual learners, you have auditory learners, you have kinesthetic learners who kind of try to do it out. So the idea of including a lot of these uh, apps into the assignment piece is how to uh, really bring about that holistic learning. And uh, whether it's engineering or B school for that matter, like assignments uh, don't necessarily have to be documents that need to be written up. It could just be a three minute session that uh, you know the students are talking about or doing something and recording that in real time and submitting it, whether it is on Flipgrid or some, some, some other video solution that is available. Uh, it could be an activity that they do together. It could be a whiteboard collaboration that we saw in the beginning. So the whole idea is uh, right in, in today's day and world, you need to have all these different tools available as an educator at your disposal to ensure or rather to gauge whether your learning is effective or no. 
and these these are tools that we are putting in the hands of the educators you might not choose to use everything but even if you use you know a few of them it, it kind of helps uh, uh, driving that student engagement right it's uh, students also get uh, bored with a lot of repetitive things so these kind of introduce that uh, variety and therefore the uh, engagement is also driven higher Fantastic. The other other part of that is also the fact that we need to do pleasure plagiarism checking and and to make sure we do that we've got turn it in integration as well. So when you do turn it in, there is integration to check for. And I think turn it in is one of those uh, you know well used uh, service on the cloud that enables that uh, to happen. Um, the other part here is insights into the completion of the assignments and the grades around that. I think uh, Nirav talked a little bit about this earlier, but you can also look at individual students performance and trends over time on how what you know the time that they're turning things in well, versus what their grades are versus their attendance and all those things we start to now start giving you more of a student centric view of the way they are engaging with your institution through teams as a platform so it's more of a day I, I look at this like a a bit like a fitbit for education where it's enabling a, uh, a analytics of the usage, daily usage patterns, seeing things, whether the student is logging in on time, whether they are submitting grades on time, whether they are obviously engaging with other students and others, other uh, educators in your institution, which gives us a bit more of a profile of how they're engaging overall. Um, yeah. And, and what we can also now do is if there is work that has been um, uh, submitted and it needs to be reassigned for work revision, it can be done. This was a well, uh, uh, I, I think this was very much a requested uh, feature from a lot of our educators in higher education because there's a lot of times we need to go back and forth and have a little bit of work to be done before the final grading happens. Um, yeah. Lastly, yeah, like I said to you earlier on, we are also making sure that it becomes the one place for you to start doing your work. So assignments on, on web, mobile, and on the desktop is an experience that has been asked for, and so we've been able to do that now. Uh, you can capture and upload assignments with a mobile device camera as well, if that's one of the things that you need to do. Uh, assignments is now completely integrated into the calendar experience with uh, Outlook, like I said earlier. So then you can manage your time accordingly and things like that. Uh, and 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 yeah, which is this was probably the one thing that we did talk about earlier, but we did, didn't show your visual on, which is the integration between class notebook and Teams. So what you're seeing here is an example of a handwritten note that has been taken using one note that is integrated into the class notebook. So here might be an example of a, a math assignment that has been done inside of one note that is viewable by the teacher and can be graded from within here and be able to you know grade sync it back to your your uh, grade grade grading system in the back end um yeah taking a photo of the physical assignment and uploading was also called out because there are some subjects that obviously can't be done digitally or need need some physical input uh, so taking the be, being able to take video or or uh, photos of that being able to up upload that is quite nice as well um, the last thing that has come up very recently is an app that we released, which is called Reading Progress, which literally allows you to use AI to measure how well a student is able to read and um, and pronounce their words and, and actually articulate um, the, the written language. Uh, this is an AI-based application that's built right into Teams. Now, we are actually seeing applications of this, obviously, in K-12, where students are learning to read, but there was a use case scenario that recently came up in Philippines where a lot of high, higher ed institutions are using this as a means to score students before they get jobs in, uh, you know, in, in employment agencies like uh, call centers. So where they do need to have good articulate English and, and being able to communicate verbally is an is a important skill, they are using reading progress to measure how well a student is able to read. So it's, it's quite an interesting use case scenario of reading progress that we never thought would be possible. But obviously, when we have, when customers have experienced this uh, particular tool, it's, it's been quite useful. Yeah, interesting telemetry that we're seeing on that, you know, the reading progress one. Uh, as you rightly point out, I mean, I think um, what 
it surprised us to see a lot of usage in higher ed because initially it was more thought of as a K-12. Uh, what we're seeing is a lot of vocational courses and uh, even in regular higher ed where the students are non-native English speakers or English is not the first or second language. Uh, the first year undergraduate students are leveraging this to kind of fine tune their uh, you know, basics about uh, reading. Uh, presenter coach is more like a final year student who's looking for a job but the reading progress is more for the first year student who's not really comfortable with uh, English as uh, the primary medium for communication. Yeah, I've also put in a link to reading progress. I think it's a really, really worthwhile um, innovation that has happened in the last couple of months that has really taken uh, a lot of uh, customers by surprise that a platform that is uh, available more as a collaboration platform has evolved into something that's enabling reading progress um, and, and situations like that. I hope that is a good expression there, Vin uh, Vindi. Do you have any questions about that? Would love to uh, explore a little bit more about, um, about reading progress as well. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about this integration with the LMS SIS there? Yeah, I, I can do that. So there are a couple of pieces to this. I think one is automation and the other one is integration. Uh, what we've seen with a lot of a lot of large customers uh, when, when the pandemic hit, I think the objective is let, let's just get up and running, you know, any way possible. And the IT teams had to bear a lot of the brunt of setting things up and all of that, right? So as academic leaders, I think we want to make life easy for the educators because they can focus on teaching learning instead of the tools. But you also want to ensure that the IT team doesn't have to do a lot of unnecessary heavy lifting. And uh, this year we're seeing a lot of uh, institutes that have started with that basic stuff looking to automate. And we do have tools like uh, School Data Sync, which allow automation of a lot of the manual stuff that might have happened last year. So for example, if you want to create new users, you want to assign licenses to all of them. You want to create class and teams and populate that uh, class team with the faculty and the students and all of that. Right? All of that can be automated today. So the end-to-end -end process of having a team with the faculty and the students ready so that the educator can just join that team and start working. Uh, in fact, they don't have to join. It's already available for them. Uh, all of that is available today to be automated. And uh, School Data Sync is, is a great tool that kind of allows them to do that. And the other advantage of School Data Sync is also kind of the more data you feed into the system, the richer your insights at the leadership level are. So the insights that we talked about earlier kind of pulls a lot of the data from SDS uh, to talk about that, uh, to build that richer dashboard. Uh, when it comes to integration, I briefly touched upon this earlier. Uh, so our, our approach is like twofold, if you will. Uh, uh, definitely, when it comes to LMSs, uh, I think we want to meet the customers where they are. So if you are, you know, using India is predominantly modal. Uh, I've, I've worked with a lot of top higher ed. I've not seen a um, lot of others. It might be some custom uh, SIS, but LMSs are typically modal. So we, we have integration uh, that works both ways. Uh, if you want uh, teams to remain your front end and you want to bring Moodle into teams, there are apps that already allow you to do that today. Like you can just go and set it up and you can start running from tomorrow. We are uh, actively working on having uh, you know, the Moodle integration uh, with LTI, wherein the Moodle remains the front end and then you kind of bring your team's capabilities into it. So depending on where you are, what your usage is, you can completely customize the way you want to integrate with your LMS. And our experience typically has been like two sets of customers. One set of customers is where, uh, you know, colleges or universities that have Moodle, but not all departments actually you know, use that as the LMS. Uh, but everybody is using Teams for their classes and stuff like that. So in that case, it's more logical to just bring Moodle into Teams so that the UI or the front end remains the same for everybody and those who want to leverage Moodle can continue to do so. Uh, the other one is where generally people, if everybody is using Moodle and you don't want to bring a lot of change management, educators don't like to change things overnight, then it's also possible that Moodle remains the front end and you kind of bring teams into the Moodle experience as well. So that's something that we are working towards and hopefully you know, in a few months you'll, you'll see an update on that early next year. Uh, the 
rest of it, uh, when it comes to SIS, I think that's an important piece. Uh, our approach is uh, on having APIs available for educators to, um, or I won't say educators, for partners and IT teams to go and build whatever integration they want. Right. So I saw a question earlier in the chat saying, hey, you know, uh, my uh, attendance is uh, happening, the class is happening in Teams. How do I get the attendance? So, yeah, while it's possible for every educator to kind of click on that download attendance report and pull that out, there is an API which is available in beta currently, which kind of allows you to automate pulling of that attendance and uh, pushing it into your uh, uh, system of records. So if you have a local SIS that you are using, you know, that you're building, you can actually pull that attendance automatically uh, using the API. It's not production. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll have that soon as well. It's still in beta, but this is something that we kind of got feedback from customers, and that's what we are working on towards. So when it comes to SIS systems or school information systems, as, you, as they are called, our approach is to have the relevant APIs that are available so uh, you, know, you can build the integration for yourself because it's not realistically possible uh, for Microsoft to kind of go and build every integration, we'll give you the platform and you can then go and build that integration for yourself. Yeah, that is, I hope that kind of covers the entire piece. Fantastic. I think you spoke to a lot of that, which is now in the slides. So I'm going to skip through some of these slides <laughs> anyway. Because a lot of this integration work has been done. So you talked about integration from the LMS perspective, being able to do things like Teams LTI app, Teams meetings LTI app that enables that meeting experience. We do provide the ability for, there is actually a Teams um, store for apps that also lets you integrate external apps or your own uh, in-house created apps to be integrated into Teams. So Teams provides various methods for you to integrate, right? Be it through the chat uh, experience, be it through the uh, meetings experience, and others, right? So there is a ability for you to extend. And adding apps to assignments, I think this is something that Nirav talked about earlier, so you can extend it by using um, the apps itself. Uh, we've been working with the SIS providers already, um, predominantly in the US uh, space that, that have been early to adopt this, but we are open to having that conversation with S your SIS providers, or if you have got your own in-house SIS, we would love to talk to you about how we integrate with um, with with uh, teams did you want to talk a little bit about how we can extend teams then with uh, bots and other intelligent solution because one of the other areas that a lot of higher education is looking at is integration through bots so one of the apps that i'm i'm proud to say i'm an alumni from um, university of new south wales they've been one of the prior uh, pioneers of using a bot called question bot um, and if you're interested in looking at how uh, Dr. Kellerman, a professor of mechanical engineering at uh, University of New South Wales, is using a bot to automate a lot of the mundane tasks of answering questions, responding to questions, and being able to also uh, get uh, interaction between students using a bot. It's an amazing case study, and I'll send you a YouTube link as Nirav takes over from me to talk about how this can be made possible. Yeah, so this kind of ties into the flexibility that Teams as a platform offers and how customers are kind of bringing their own solutions or building their own solutions into, uh, into Teams. Uh, Qbot is a great example of that. Thanks for bringing that up, Amit. Uh, so the, the scenario is if I am a professor, I have students asking questions. Some of them are like really mundane questions that uh, you know the anybody else should also know the answer to. So what it does is if once a student posts a question, it uh, tags the educator, but it allows everybody else in the class to also answer a particular question. And as an educator, I just go through those answers and I can say, hey, you know, this looks a fairly good answer. Let me mark this as the correct one. So not only does the student get the answer, uh, what the bot does is it kind of updates its knowledge. So the next time somebody asks a similar question, uh, it will automatically uh, show the same answer. And if the student is still not satisfied, uh, he or she can always ping the educator over there and the cycle repeats. So it, it really helps uh, educators who are handling multiple classes uh, and it, it kind of brings the power of collaboration into real time, right? I, I think one of the things with online, uh, that the feedback is in person, uh, the real time collaboration is probably a little better. 
this kind of addresses that uh, gap a little more. That's just one example. I think Teams as a platform, um, some of you, if you're more tech focused and you know, hey, what are the different ways in which we can uh, leverage Teams as a platform? I think Amit did share the developer documentation earlier as well. Bots is one example. There are multiple other ways in which you can create a rich, engaging experience uh, within Teams. Uh, it, it just makes life easy for educators and students. It could be something as simple as you know blocking your meeting room or blocking your multipurpose hall or a football stadium, some app which kind of allows you to do that. Uh, or maybe even your cafeteria, like there's limited seating in the cafeteria. How do I block my slot so that I know that if I go at 12.30, I'll get a seat in the cafeteria and stuff like that. So there are different ways in which you can create these solutions. Some of them could be bots, which are one-to-one -one, uh, or one-to-many. Some of it, it could just be a tab in a channel uh, where you, you kind of capture multiple other things and you want to bring that uh, collaborative experience. Uh, you know, so there are there are different options that you can do that. Yeah, Amit, do you want to run through the virtual apps and all of that? I think that you are on mute, my friend. Touche. <laughs> My, my 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 turn to do that now. Uh, um, yeah, so a couple of other things that have really been, um, you know, coming to the top of mind for a lot of customers is the ability for you to run Azure Labs as a service within Teams, right? So it becomes like a conversation uh, when you're doing things like programming or other applications that do require you to use, uh, you know, cloud-based services uh, to, you know, handle the, the teaching and learning outcomes for that particular um course, then you can start integrating that into the uh, Teams experience as well. So which is quite nice that, like we said at the beginning of the call, we are trying to create Teams as the one place, one UI, one workflow where, you know, you are going through all these experiences. So it creates less of a distraction and also creates a very predictable workflow that everyone can follow along. Um, so that's something else that we've noticed is that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis in a 45-minute class or whatever the time the class is, you don't have time to go through multiple tabs, multiple applications. Teams reduces that complexity of, of having to deal with that. Um, the other one that, that we kind of talked about right at the beginning of the call was this integration into this no-code, low-code environment. So Power Apps is now integrated into Teams. So if you are creating applications within your university, and I know of universities in Singapore that have replaced um, you know, close to 700 manual forms with the Power Apps uh, as an example. So, you know, being able to do, you know, repeatable tasks like joining teams or clubs or whatever else and other things that usually took manual, um, you know, forms to fill out and things are now automated through uh, Power Apps. They're also using Power Apps for doing basic uh, approvals and being able to route um, documents through approval processes and things like that. So there's a lot of work that can be done between the Power Platform and Teams to integrate the experience as well. Um, the other one that, that now has become probably the number one requirement as the pandemic goes on is being able to protect IP inside an um, environment. So with the advanced uh, SKUs that we provide with um, information barriers, communication compliance, retention policies, data loss prevention, discovery, legal hold, compliance, content search, auditing and reporting are all capabilities that are built into the platform. Like I said, um, right at the, at the outset, the whole platform is built on the foundation of identity security, management, and compliance. So that's one of the reasons that you can then start using this in a more meaningful way. So because it's built on the foundation of M365 security, you can then have all of these uh, safe class sessions. I, I saw a question earlier about, you know, who can join a meeting? How do you prevent unauthorized users? Uh, defending against threats, malicious software, right in. So they're, you know, being able to detect things like ransomware and others are also part of this whole platform. So the don't just think about Teams in, in its isolation, but think about it in its whole whole that we talked about right at the beginning, which is built on the foundation of M365. That's what we wanted to cover. I don't know if there is any questions, uh, but you know, uh, you can also read on some of the case studies that we've got. I've given you a couple of video case studies in the chat as well. 
Um, that should give you an idea of why this has become such a popular uh, platform in the last little while, why there is a lot of uh, migration from bespoke tools into a best of breed platform, because the old old way of thinking in the 90s and earlier on was to think about uh, how we can use or plug together or bring together multiple tools. So what I want to leave you guys with is also a link um, to this particular uh, site, which is AKAMS Inter Interactive ETF. And if it's not working inside the browser, I will actually uh, showcase this on my on my page so you can actually see it. Um, AKMS Interactive ETF is the site. What this is is actually a collection of all the places where we are seeing adoption of our platform. So you'll see case studies, how we are, we've been going about things and, and examples of where people have been. So there are higher education institution examples of customers using our platform. For example, you know, University of Texas system is using it to, um, you know, you'll see links from here directly into their case studies. Some of the links may be old, but um, for example, University of Texas is providing their admissions using Power BI as a link. So they are using our platform for being able to track users and, you know, enrollments and things like that. So these are these are multiple examples of customers who are using our platform for various purposes, teaching and learning are examples, so securing and connecting a campus, academic research, COVID-19 related work that has happened in, in the last little while. And all of these are case studies. And, and I just thought I would share this link so that you can see how your peer organizations across the world are using our platform in a very meaningful way. And you'll see, you know, technologies that have been used like Teams and others. That, and, and it's also a great example of how Power BI can be used as a platform as well. So that's one, one link that I do want to make sure I, I leave with you guys so that you can uh, look at this, this at your leisure as well. Anything else to add to that, Nero? Well, I, I think we can take questions if we have any in the last couple of minutes i think we've kind of gone through most of the yeah. things yeah and there was a i mean there was a very nice question about you know hey what's happening with google as a platform versus what we are doing here clearly there's a lot of innovation from multiple um, vendors out there but we we fundamentally believe in in a differentiated approach here which is a little bit more holistic and also career ready because one thing we are getting a lot of feedback from higher education is making sure that you know the skills, the use of these tools are then translated into uh, into a career ready opportunity, and we are seeing adoption of that. As I mentioned in the chat, uh, you know all but two universities in Australia right now are using M365, and the other two that are using the other platform are migrating actively right now. So in the next holidays, they will be, uh, which is coming up very soon, they will be migrating to our platform as well. So I think we are seeing a lot of uh, that. Um, culmination of we've got a lot of bespoke tools. We now need a platform with the data insights. We're working with some major, um, you know, uh, education systems in Japan that are now consolidating on our platform because of the data insights and the capability we're providing out of the box. Uh, the the things that um, Nirav talked about earlier as well. So there's yeah, that's it. The there's one question in the chat that keeps answering. Is can we record classes without the faculty having to remember to press record button? <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if it's released uh, as yet, but we should have that option soon. I think the, work, the standard or the recommended workaround would be to create a recurring meeting. And I think in the meeting options, it does show that can I automatically record stuff? Uh, it's, it's there on our roadmap. I'm not sure if it's already released. I haven't checked it recently, but it's, it's there on our roadmap. So if the, you create a recording, a recording meeting and enable that button, then the faculty doesn't have to worry about that. Great. And there, there is a there is a roadmap site that we have externally facing roadmap site that may or may be of interest for everyone as well. So you know when you are investing in our platform, what is the upcoming 
capabilities, but also as Nirav kept on mentioning, we are actively looking for feedback from our customers who are adopting our platform on a daily basis. Because a lot of our prioritization comes from feedback. The more votes we get for a particular feature, the more likely we are to put our resource towards solving that problem earlier. Will the recording be available for future reference? Yes. Assuming yes. Uh, I think you can hand it over to Sunil. Uh, Sunil, you have a green screen. Ah, okay. ah yeah, it's green screen. So, <laughs> Sunil, how was that? Yeah, so I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for such an engrossing and informative session, and it was very useful. But, you know, more than that, I'm admiring you guys for the questions that just kept coming and coming. It was really an interactive session. I was looking in the chat window, and one thing I liked is, as, as I just uh, you know accidentally mentioned the word gyan. This wasn't gyan. People are asking very specific brass tag questions. So I really liked it. I mean, if you look at the questions, they were very. I mean, people are really getting down to business and interesting. It was quite interactive. So kudos to you guys. I mean, that shows that everyone was listening and very interested. So, <laughs> you yeah. sound surprised to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, uh, blame me. Maybe it's COVID Zoom fatigue for one and a half years. Well, we've that's why we're doing this. this on Teams, so we don't have Zoom fatigue. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, so I know I enjoyed it because I mean the audience was enjoying. I mean that is the most great. Important. Look, I I really appreciate everyone's interaction, and you know there are some people who. And I'm I'm a little scared of that guy whose whose name is Sunil Deshpande because that is my father-in-law's name. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so actually, when he when he joined, I was like, who is the Sunil Deshpande? <laughs> 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 That's exactly my father. I was looking at my WhatsApp going, how did he know about this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> so not not picking on you, sir. It just happens to be your name is uh, coincidentally the same as my father. So we have lots of drama too, apart from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he's not my father-in-law clearly, <laughs> because my father-in-law may not have that same sense of humor. <laughs> uh, very good. Thanks, so Sonali, maybe, for maybe for all the feedback. Maybe you give some passing passing you know last words since it was so good. Just sum it up. Both of you give one you know passing one para. Passing shot for everyone to think over. Nirav, you go. <laughs> yeah, you, put, you put us in a spot. So I think we did a nice wrap up. Uh, no, I, I, I think, see, I come at it from an engineering viewpoint, right? We, we've seen the last 18 to 24 months uh, really, really uh, hectic development, and a lot of it is driven by customer feedback. So, one thing is keep the feedback coming. I think it's, it's great. It, it definitely drives the way we work on a day-to-day -day basis. And second, if you're really thinking about Teams, think of Teams as a platform and not a product. Uh, I, I think it can do whatever you want it to do. Right? We've, we've, we've seen enough examples where, uh, you know, like I generally don't like to talk about other compete, but uh, we've seen customers bring Zoom apps into Teams because they had already paid for Zoom. Uh, but they are bringing that into Teams because Teams is that canvas for them to bring all the things together to one, right? So that's our vision. Um, great. You want to use it for meetings, use it. You want to use it for uh, as an LMS, use that. You want to bring your own solutions into Teams, sure, go ahead, right? So that's that's the vision. And if you kind of think along those lines, uh, you, you'll have an amazing ROI that you can derive from whatever investments that you're making. So I'll, I'll leave it at that for you. Fantastic. Hey, thanks. Uh, Sunil, I'll, I'll end on a, on a different note. I mean, I he's already got, Nero's already covered the technology aspect. I will cover the other aspect, the other side. You know, remember we talked about the three pillars right at the beginning? The whole concept of the ETF and the education transformation. We can we consider that as a journey, and we want you to be on that journey with us. And the tools are the enabler for it. And what we, we what would love to have you look at is this resource, which is the Edu Journey, which takes you on this transformation journey because it it lets you take an assessment of where you are. So you can see, you know, that hey, look, I am I, I may think that I am in a in a place where I'm using this technology really well, 
but you don't know yet until you know how you're using the technology in a meaningful way. So we've covered many areas of the, of the education transformation from student success, how does student recruitment happen, student retention happen. And so what you'll notice here, we now need to bring in different parts of the institution together. People who look at student administration to teaching and learning people who are looking after LMSs to obviously people who are doing facilities management, institution operations, people who are looking after uh, you know, security, academic research, and so on and so forth. A lot of the times when we do this conversation with customers, they've never met each other. <laughs> Right, I've been, I've been in meetings where they've had to introduce each other's role to each other to say, hey, this is what I do and this is what I've done prior to that. And what we're then doing is we're going to give you the ability to assess your current state and your target state. And this gives you the ability to do a delta change for yourself. You know, everyone may say that I want to be a transformative, but reality is, you know, how does your current enrollment process work? You know, retention, how is it working? Alumni engagement, how is it going? And you can honestly reflect on this and then decide on the various technical projects and processes that are going to help you with this. And Teams will come out as one of the tools that you may want to use. As, as Nirav said, that's what we are aiming to do. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a different angle to look at this before you get into the usage of the tools, right? I strongly encourage you guys to kind of take this assessment if you, if you haven't already done so. It does create for interesting, you know, very robust conversations where in workshops where I've been involved, Microsoft people have left the room for a half an hour because there's been a, you know, very robust heated conversation before between people as well. So it's 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 a it's an interesting conversation to be had. I'll I'll leave you guys with that link. And I want to appreciate everyone's time today. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for having us, Sunil. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Nirav. And thanks to the audience. Good. Yes. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. And Good evening. Have a great Signing day. off. Bye for now. Bye.